Welcome to Kuvulu, the sorcery of copper. In this episode, I will talk about this. Not the ball itself. This is just your Osmoto Serial, one of the boards I made and I've already presented it in a previous episode. I want to talk about this thing, the small logo here. I use this logo uh, to denote that this hardware is open source hardware. It's not the one which you are familiar with and I'll explain why I chose it and how I made it. Whatever I produce, I try to put it under some kind of open source license. It's not because I think it will make the world a better place or because this is the single and only model which you should use for everything. No, it's more because I don't mind sharing and if it helps you, so be it. But you want to show this, so you want to tell the others, okay, you can reuse my material if you want. And on the videos I produce, it's pretty easy. On the ending, I show that I use a Creative Commons license as you've seen on the bottom. So that's easy. Now, when I also have a wiki and here it's a bit harder to show that I use an open source license, but if you go at the bottom, you will still see at the end of the page that I use some Creative Commons license for the wiki. So that's okay. And then the source code, which I deliver, which you can find under the, the Git, you can put a header in the source file telling what kind of license you're using. In my case, I use the G one of the GPL licenses. And whoever wants to edit the software will probably see it. Even better, because when you give source code, you give files. It's something which you have to handle on the computer. So whatever, whoever downloads the source code will see this license.txt file. And in this file, you will clearly see the license. In hardware, it's a bit more difficult. Well, you can still show the license.txt whenever someone, someone downloads the, um, the somehow source code, so the schematics, the PCBs, and so on. And on the schematic, you can put also the license itself. So for hardware, I'm using the CERN license. But hardware itself, like it says, it's hardware, it's something you have in your hands, it's not something you have m most of the time on the computer and you still want to show um, that it's open source. So what better than to put a logo on the hardware itself? I'm not the first one who thought it might be a good idea to have a logo which you can put on your hardware and this way you can show this is open source hardware and you can do whatever you want with it well almost as long as you comply with the license and you might be a lot more familiar with this logo here or more recently this logo um, the open source hardware association also had the idea and brought up this logo this was in 2011 this in 2014 i think and it was created during the open hardware summit you can use this logo as long as you comply with the definition of open source hardware. And I think it's a good idea to have created this kind of movement and at least to have some kind of definition or some kind of understanding what it means. And I pretty much like this logo because it has the O for open hardware, then it has the C for the right, the copyright or copyleft, well, it's a bit in the middle, mm, the dents, which are on this gear so it really shows that this is hardware and you might already be familiar with this logo here the same thing it has the O it has the C and this is a derivative of this logo just by changing the color and adding the gear and it fits pretty well so this is generally used for open source and as you can see there's an R here this is a registered logo it's used by the open source initiative and when this came out, they thought, well, you're using too much of, a, of our logo. You shouldn't, we should some kind, some have some definition or agreement because this is registered. This was, this logo was created in 2011 and at the end of 2012, they came with an agreement between the open source uh, initiative and the open source hardware summit where they allowed to use this logo if you respect this agreement. So it is pretty okay. But this is one of the drawbacks. And before 
I, uh, I had the issue of using an open source logo before this agreement was settled. The other problem is that now this, uh, this logo is more some kind of a trademark for the open source hardware association, but also for the open hardware summit. Even if it's provided on the Creative Commons license, there is some kind of trademark to it. The other problem I had is that if you look at it, what they provide, they, they came up with this raster version, a PNG 400 pixel big. And someone else, so this logo here was provided by, so this is the new version, but I've started with this version. This version was provided by Maclean Chaffee. And this version here is provided by um, Matteo Zlata. And they provide a picture, a PNG picture of 800 pixel. And someone else, like Brandon Stedford, had to do the vector version of it. And the same guy is also the vector version of this one. And I mean, when you provide a logo, you, as simple as this, you immediately provide an open, so uh, an open source a vector version of it. You don't want you don't wait for someone else to create a vector version of it. The also other problem is that, at least with the other logo, they didn't provide any PCB format for my for my um, CAD software. Here they provide one for KiCad, and you could find it also for KiCad or for Eagle, the old one. But it wasn't provided by the open source hardware itself, and at the time which um, I created my logo, um, there was it was pretty hard to find it and the the quality was not good and so on so this is what a bit i didn't like and why they created logo and the last point is have you tried to draw this logo on some kind of card for electronic i mean here you have like simple lines and 45 degree lines and that's that's almost all you can do. You also have some arcs probably, but it you cannot do as complicated arcs as there are on on this logo. So it's a real pain to draw this logo on on your board. And all of this made me create my own logo, and I created this one. It's as you can see, it is pretty simple, and it has the advantage that you can draw it on any kind of soft uh, on any kind of electronic card like these are simple lines these are simple arcs which you find everywhere these are lines also and what it represents here is a chip so an electronic chip with here you have the pads and in here you have the footprint of the of the body and you can see that the body is open and inside the open body of this chip you find the o s h v letters standing for open source hardware. So it's a simple, but I found it a good way to show that this is open source hardware. And this is more tailored to electronics, simply because this is easy to make on the electronics. Um, this is easy to draw in your CAD software for electronics, but you can put also draw it in any other software. I mean, the elements are pretty simple. Now I solved the first problem which I had with this logo is that it this is hard to to draw on um, PCB and so on and even putting the name open hardware this is even harder I didn't even try that the second thing which I change is that from beginning on I am providing the vector version of it um, so if you go on open source hardware logo dot info, you will be able to generate your own logo and you can save it on the um, SVG file. So vector graphics. And this is the one which you see right here. Not only you can save it on the SVG file, you can save it also as footprint for all other software. So I'm using the Gita PCB software. You might not have heard of it and it seems to be a bit super old but I like it because it's quite powerful and it's quite scriptable so it fits perfectly my need and you can save it as footprint for that you can also save it as footprint for KiCad I 
pen recommend keycat i started with it and it's growing really strong and it's a it's a good software but the one which is most used for hobby electronics is probably eagle but i also provide this footprint for eagle so whenever you cry creating some open hardware you can use some svg to put in your um, to put on top on marking on your drawings or, or in your files on your schematic or so on and then for electronics i provide the footprints and you can download them all and they were quite nil nice this solves the second problem so i provided the svg from beginning on and the footprints for the for the different software the last part was that it's some kind of a trademark. Well, on this one, I don't really care of the trademark. You can do whatever you want with it. The best of it, um, and even better, because you can generate your own one. If, if this one doesn't fit you, you can change the size of each thing. You can put the pads on the copper. You can really customize the logo yourself and because you can customize it you are generating and you are creating the logo so whenever you save it i'm not the author of the logo i cannot even say it's a trademark of because of me because you generated your own logo you can also keep the the default one and this is how i solved the last piece so just use it and do whatever you want with it and you can generate under under this website um also, if you want the source code of uh, how I generated it and how I export the different things, you can go on this kit and you will find the source code for that. And with that, I think I'm done. Um, yeah, use it. Enjoy it.